As night approaches, you start to head home from the park. In the summer, the air is so clean and pure that you take every chance you get to venture out into the world and let the wind brush against your fur. The park is not but a short walk from the small city you call home, and the fresh air never leaves the space around you. The walkway is paved from end to end with a variety of stones in different shapes, sizes, colors, and textures, and walking across them is like walking through an ancient city. As the trees and green of the park end, small two-story shops fill both sides of the walkway. To your left, a bike shop, which is always filled with people browsing and purchasing attachments and fixes. To your right, a bakery. The smell of fresh baked breads fill your lungs and remind you of Sunday morning, where you often pick up a couple soft and warm bagels for breakfast. As your watch ticks to 9 p.m. exactly, the street lights illuminate and make the remainder of the road clearly visible where you see a small convenience store, a pharmacy, a bookstore, and a cafe, the latter being the one you are most interested in. It is too late for a coffee, but you figure a hot chocolate and a warm cinnamon roll would do you nicely. As you walk inside the coffee shop, a small bell rings softly to notify the barista of your presence. Good evening, he says to you as you step inside the smooth tiled establishment. You notice how empty the booths are this late at night, but this doesn't bother you and allows you to notice small details of this well-maintained shop. The sugar containers are filled precisely to the brim and each table is clean and reflective, waiting for the next morning. You figure you should keep them that way and make your way to the bar and take a seat on the red leather bar stools. Every item that the shop offers is written in neat, clean script on three large black boards on the wall behind the counter. What may I make for you? The tall red fox turns his attention to you and places his clean paws on the edge of the counter and listens with his black tipped ears. He is wearing blue jeans, a white t-shirt, and a green apron. On it, the logo and name of the cafe, his name tag, and various stains from throughout the day. You realize that it is probably the only unclean thing in this entire shop. His name tag is written in the same clean script as the blackboards, but instead of coffee and food, it says Cody. His fur is red from the top of his head down to the knuckles of his paws. His ears, fingers, and muzzle are tipped with black and his jaw down to his shirt collar is white. His voice is low and quiet, almost like he is trying to avoid creating an echo in the empty cafe. You order what you planned, a small hot chocolate and a cinnamon roll. The fox nods and turns around. His tail sways to the music you just now notice playing through small speakers in each corner of the shop. From this angle, you notice that his tail is also tipped with black fur. As you look around the inside of the cafe, you feel like you've traveled back in time before the era of digital machines and automation. The coffee machines that Cody works on require his skilled manual input to function, and the cash register has metal buttons and lacks wires or screen. The only piece of modern technology in sight are the speakers which continue to play soft jazz music. The fox finishes your hot chocolate first and uses a pair of plastic tongs to pull the last remaining cinnamon roll from behind the heated glass display case. He sets the roll on an appropriately sized plate and sets the plate on the space in front of you. Alongside the paper cup, your drink comes in. As you drink from your hot chocolate, which is covered in whipped cream to help it cool down, Cody uses a clean white rag to wipe down the machine and counter he was just using. He walks to the entrance door and hangs up his apron on a hat rack and flips the sign from open to closed. You can take all the time you need, you don't have to rush. Cody walks back behind the counter and sits casually in his own stool. 
The hot chocolate is amazing, and the cinnamon roll is even better. When you tell the fox, he smiles and thanks you. As you finish your late night snack, you hear the distinct sound of thunder in the distance, and sure enough, the soft sound of rain starts to tap against the glass front of the cafe. Did you pack an umbrella? The fox asks rhetorically. You smile at him and shake your head. The fox stands up and takes your empty plate and cup, throwing the latter in the trash and setting the former underneath the counter. You pull out your wallet, but the fox holds up his paw and stops you. Please, it's on the house. It was nice to share this experience with you. It's not often that this place is empty. You smile and thank him. He wags his tail and steps from behind the counter to walk to the front door. He grabs a black umbrella from the same hat rack that holds his apron and holds the front door open for you. You stand up from your bar stool and walk out, the fox following close behind. Are you going far? I can't have you walking out in the rain like this without an umbrella. You tell him that you just need to take the streetcar and then walk a few blocks and that he doesn't need to worry about you. But the fox insists on getting you home, and knowing that the alternative is getting wet, you accept. Cody shuts the door and locks it with one of a few keys on a small key ring. They say opening an umbrella indoors is bad luck. Have you ever heard of that? You nod, and the fox slides the mechanism on the umbrella up to make the fabric open and protect you from the rain. Cody looks down at you and smiles as he starts to walk towards the tram station. You follow close beside him. You notice the air being slightly colder now, and you're glad that you aren't walking home in the rain. You walk past more familiar buildings on the way to the tram. A comic book store, a small family restaurant, a laundromat, and a travel agency with large posters advertising beautiful locations that you someday hope to visit. You don't have to wait long for the streetcar to arrive and you and Cody board together. The ride is free after 8 p.m., so nobody was waiting to collect your ticket. You guessed the rain made everyone else stay indoors because no one else was on the tram with you and the fox. Cody closes the umbrella and shakes a bit of the water into the street. You and him stay quiet as the train takes you closer and closer to home. In the cold air, you are glad to have a warm body next to you. The streetcar takes a few soft turns and starts to go downhill, causing you to get unsteady and fall into Cody. He laughs with you and you smile up at him. Embarrassed, you apologize to him, but he dismisses it by shaking his head and flicking his tail. The fox takes your smaller paw in his soft grasp and places it on a golden bar attached to the tram. You can use these to keep your balance, so you don't have to use me. Cody giggles, but really, you don't mind the contact you just had with the fox. He was warm and soft, and his paws were smooth and gentle. Your house is not far from the final streetcar station, and you and Cody continue the trip home by foot, umbrella high above you. Not a single drop of rain ever touches you but half of Cody's white shirt starts to get wet and slightly translucent. You can see his vibrant red fur and subtle indents of his muscles. You feel slightly guilty for taking up so much of the fox's umbrella, but something tells you that Cody doesn't mind being wet. You point your blue two-story apartment out for Cody, and he leads you to the front door underneath the awning after closing the umbrella. Well, I guess this is where I leave you, you nod and thank him for everything, but something still feels missing. You just aren't sure what. The fox stands for just a moment before leaning down to kiss your forehead. You blush and that feeling of missing washes away just like the rain flowing into storm drains along the road. The fox smiles at you and without saying a word, opens the umbrella back up and walks down the street. From that point on, you decide you will become very familiar with the cafe and the fox behind the coffee bar.